Right, how you all doing people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well now. Listen, I am ill. You might be able to hear it in my voice. I'm all bunged up with snot. <laughs> Which is gross, but you're going to have to bear with me. And you know what, man? I made it. I'm here. There's something interesting I want to talk to you guys about today. So I've done it. I've got up out of bed. And I'm going to talk to you guys about finances. <laughs> and what it means. Chelsea's record profits for the last two transfer windows. And also a potential footballer. Because that's fun too. So you might have seen the news, the headlines from all sorts of publications. Certainly Sky Sports News has published an article about it, the CIES producing net profits from all the clubs around world football, Chelsea are at that top because they've had a transfer ban. But just want to give you an idea of figures of what's going on and what it means man, what it means. So we're going to power on through and I'm going to give you the good gear but before we do that I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. We are so close to 40,000 subscribers so please do subscribe, hit that bell and notifications icon because that is important. Why not like the video to help me out and follow me on Instagram because that's fun. I do Instagram lives. You can come and hang out and say hi. Follow me on Instagram. All right, let's get into it. Okay, I am gonna have to read off my phone again today because I'm, again, I'm ill. I wanna read it, talk to you about it and kind of react naturally because I feel like that makes better content in terms of my instinctive, organic reaction. Mm. So today I will be citing from Sky Sports. Chelsea recorded the highest net profit of any club in world football in the last two transfer windows, according to newly published data. Serving a transfer ban last summer and after being deemed to have breached FIFA regulations of the recruitment of young players, Chelsea spent just 45 million euros, brackets, 38 million pounds, to turn Mateo Kovacic's loan into a permanent. 38 million pounds for Mateo Kovacic at his age, at his ability in playing level is looking like quite the snip at the moment isn't it the west londoners made a further 205 million euro pounds i say pounds see i am ill bear with me 205 million euros brackets 173.7 million pounds around 200 million in player sales stemming largely from an 100 pound add-on sale of eden hazard to Real madrid yeah so chelsea made loads of money 174 million pounds through player sales, mainly from Ed Nazard. So to give you some context, by contrast, Real Madrid posted 181 million euros in negative balance on transfers, according to research by the CIES Football Observatory. Observatory. Aston Villa were also low down on the list, second to only Real Madrid spending 172 million euros on players following their promotion from the championship, earning just 3 million in return for 169 million balance. Villa, man, if they go down, they've spent so, I mean, they've been waiting to come up for a few years, but damn, that's a big spend, man. Real Madrid, they gotta do something. We all knew Real Madrid spent that much money because they were just like playing FIFA in the summer, weren't they? Zidane was just like, I'll buy you, Jovic, Hazard, the other guys, I'm forgetting their names, but there was loads. Frank Lampard's side did not sign anyone in January despite uh, having their transfer ban lifted. Oh boy, don't we know it. Yeah, anyway, overall the Premier League clubs fared poorly, having the largest net deficit of any other of Europe's top five leagues, accounting for a combined 844 million euros, brackets 715 million pounds, more in outgoings than money earned. Yeah, but that's the Premier League, man. That's where the money maker is. Not just the Premier League have more money to spend. Also, there's that Premier League tax, you know what I mean? Which means they just pay more money and therefore they're going to be in the negs. And when you sell out, they never really get enough money for their players. Apart from Chelsea, actually. Marina Granel Sky is really good at getting loads of money for player sales from Chelsea, so God bless her for that. Right, so you're probably remembering this. Chelsea, who posted losses of 96.7 million in the last financial results, are the only Premier League side to feature in the top 10 of clubs in terms of net earners this financial year. Or Okay, so last financial year, Chelsea posted that loss. I did a video on it. You can go back and see it. It's when I've talked about how Abramovich put all his own money in to balance the books which was a worrying sign in a way, but also shows how Abramovich is still really committed to Chelsea Football Club and is willing to take like, what was it, like 200 million or something of his own money from another company and put it back into Chelsea. He loves Chelsea, up the Chelsea, everything's gonna be okay, right? We're fine. 
So yeah, there's that. But this is different. This is Chelsea posting massive profits from the last two uh, transfer windows and whatnot. So yeah, top of the pops here, Chelsea. Benfica second. So in the top 10, there's no other Premier League teams, like the article says. Chelsea are top, 250 million in, uh, incomings. Benfica is second with 230. That's pretty much because of Jao Felix, because he cost a lot of money. Ajax are next, but they sold De Jong and De Ligt, so they're going to make a lot of money. Sporting, probably because of Bruno Fernandes. RB Salzburg. Uh, Holland, you know, it goes on, it's pretty obvious. Benfica earned 150 million blah, 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 to Joe Felix to Atletico Madrid. Yes, we know. Yes, Ajax, I'm pretty much just saying this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, this is interesting. So Real Madrid's uh, uh, in. Actually, this is really interesting. The most who are in the minuses, who are in the negatives, obviously Real Madrid, after their massive spending spree, they spent 330 million in the last two windows earning less than half of that 149 which means financial fair play people might be knocking on their door Villa a second which is just blowing my mind um, and Barcelona a third and Man United and Tottenham a fourth and fifth so Man United and Tottenham are spending money their fans cannot be upset with them and in terms of the Premier League teams there's only one team to feature in the top 20 to be in the positives and that's Crystal Palace, mainly because of the sale of Aaron Wan-Bissaka for like wherever he cost 55 million to Manchester United, so it puts them in the top 20, which is interesting. So there you have it, there's the publications by CIES Football Observatory for Chelsea's profits. What does it mean? Right, so no spending the last two windows, apart from Kovacic, but in profit, like 175 million pounds in profits, plus, you know, whatever the general marketing gains are from Chelsea, tickets at the stadium, um, you know, you don't get much, but you still get something for winning the Europa League, that would probably be into this financial year, wouldn't it? I'm not sure, but also playing in the group stage, qualifying out of the group stages, I think you get 60 million for just being in the Champions League, plus you get a bunch of more money for qualifying to the knockout rounds, which Chelsea have. I imagine Chelsea will actually make some player sales in the summer as well, Come the summer, come the summer, <laughs> Chelsea should be so in the green in terms of financial fair play, they could probably spend like 300 million pounds or something more. You know, they could spend so, so much money, Chelsea, in the summer if they want to. I'm not saying that's smart. Just because you have money to spend doesn't mean you should go and spunk it all at once. A, people can drive up prices, obviously, and B, it might not just be sensible. I'm really excited to have Frank Lampard as a manager, but can he spend loads of money at once is yet to be seen. I don't want to just be like, here's 300 million, bro, see you well on. Do you know what I mean? I want to be like, right, let's be sensible. Let's get a superstar winger. Let's get a striker. Take a, take a breath, everyone. We all calm? We cool? Right, now let's get a left back. How much we spend? Okay, we spent uh, 170 million. Ooh, wow, okay, maybe we'll chill. We're gonna chill? We'll chill? All right. Do you see what I mean? So the money's gonna be there, confirmation. But it is an interesting article on Sky Sports. I'd urge you guys to go check it out. And I do wanna talk about Dries Mertens. Now, I made a bunch of videos on Dries Mertens towards the end of the winter transfer window. I am personally a big fan of his. Yes, I know he's old, whatever, players get old. But I still think he can do a job and he's a very, very versatile player and he could be, again, in many ways, but it's kind of <laughs> different at the same time, be the kind of Moussa Dembele striker profile, more talented than him, but the kind of name that would come in and not necessarily undermine Tammy Abraham as the number nine at Chelsea because Tammy's less than 10 years younger than him and is more, you know, equipped to be running around in the Premier League. But Dries Mertens could be a role model for hudson Adoy. he could be a role model for Pulisic, he could be a role model for Tammy, strikers, wingers, number 10s, Mason Mount as well, he can play everywhere, he's a really, really good player. Apparently, he's not likely to sign an extension at Napoli. Now, he stayed at Napoli in the winter January transfer window because he was four goals off becoming Napoli's top scorer of all time. And he should do that because he's like, you know, loved by Naples, he's where he spent the best years of his career. Narrative, narrative, narrative. I get it, I get it, I get it. But the fact is, he's not signing the extension. And him and his wife, girlfriend, wife, lady, person, they both love London. And apparently, Christophe Torreira, the Belgian uh, journalist, said, had they get the opportunity to move to London, they'll do it. I love Drew's Mertens, man, what can I say? Even if it's, I don't know, a 12-month contract, so he might just spend a year 
at Chelsea, hanging out in London. He speaks fluent English. He won't have any problems integrating. He'll probably just be an excellent player for a while. Or Chelsea look at what's going on. I don't know. It probably won't happen. But if you want to know my thoughts on Dries Mertens, you can go back and watch the videos I did on him. He's posted absolutely incredible numbers in recent years, and he's very versatile. And he's a very upbeat, fun, hilarious character. Good for the dressing room. Good for the pitch good to be a role model and I reckon the coach would like him to. So it's interesting, he could get his top scorer record at Napoli for up towards the end of the season, hang up his hat, maybe come to London for 12 months, I don't know, you, you guys know I love him, that's what I'm saying, who knows, rather than spending 60 million on um, Moussa Dembele, maybe you just get Mertens on a free for 12 months, pay him like a lot of money because he's on a free, say look man we're just going to give you 300k a week for 12 months, you, you mad at that? No you're not mad at that? Come to SW6, etc, etc. Right, I need more painkillers and stuff. I'm going down, man. I'm ill. I feel it. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I presented some information to you today. I certainly found it interesting. And although I'm horrendously ill, I did enjoy filming it. So if you've enjoyed watching it, please do like this video. Please do sub to the channel. If you are indeed new, help me get to that 40k mark, please. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. <sighs> That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football. I will. See you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry I don't. I love me, baby.